Hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial on this channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can pass data between two scenes. Let's not waste any time and dive right into it. But what is my setup? I've got two scenes and a barrel. In scene one I just got a function to switch the scene, a little canvas to visualize the value that is in the data source which we can change here and also a button to switch the scene. This is not a best practice how this is set up, but I think for the sake of this video, it's totally fine. The second scene is there to visualize the amount we want to pass by spawning the barrels. Therefore, I just got the world where some stuff is in there and a little spawn barrel script, which does nothing but spawn barrels. There are some methods to pass data from scene to scene. And I'll start with the first one, which is using the don't destroy on load. We can create an empty game object and call this data manager, for example, and create a new class called data manager. In here, we can delete everything and create a new awake function. This function is executed exactly once before the startup and is there to set up the whole object. And in here, we want to apply the single pattern. So this means we can access this instance of the whole class or the game object in this case from everywhere. Also, and this is the important part, we want to apply the don't destroy a load method on this game object. This method prevents the game object to be destroyed on a scene change. So as you want so, this whole data manager is kind of a data transporter. Now we can have some kind of player score in here or transport value. Let's make a property out of it. And now this value gets transported from scene to scene. Now we need to access this in our regarding classes. So on change, we're just setting the value in the data manager by accessing its instance. And now the value gets updated here. And now at the start, we can easily access the value from another scene. It's important to have it in the start function to make sure that the awake function already was called so that everything is set up correctly. Cool, so let's try it out. So now have a look on this data manager. When I start the game, the data manager kind of disappears from our scene, but reappears in our don't destroy a load scene. So in here we have our data manager. We can go into the debug mode to see all private values. And you see transport value is zero, as this is the default right here. When I go to data sources and apply a new value, let's say eight, the UI is updated accordingly. And let's have a look at the data manager. And there you see also the number eight. When I switch scene, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight barrels. So this is working correctly. So with this method, you can easily transport values between scenes. It is simple and built into Unity and also is a persistent data storage. But the con side of it is that the game object always stays in memory even if it's not needed after a scene change. Another way to do it is using a static class. Let's create a new class and call that game data. This should be a public static class. And in here we can say public static int transport value. So you see there is no need for a game object because this static class does not derive from mono behavior. So let's switch to our data source and also apply the value to the game data. Let's go to our spawn barrels class. And here we do not want to use the data manager, but we want to use the game data. So let's try it out. Let's say we want to use the number five. Hooray, it's working. So this is simple and performant for small data sets. But the con side is that the data is lost if the application is restarted and there is potential for memory leaks if not managed properly. And the third and last way to do it is using player prefs. Player prefs is good for small amounts of data you want to persist between sessions. And it's super easy by just calling two methods. It's the player pref set and the player pref get. Of course you need to save it. So in summary, three functions you have to call. So let's go to our data source. In here, we want to set the player prefs dot set int, and we call this transport value. And we want to set it to the value and then save that. Please have in mind that this is not the best practice. You do not want to save this every update. This is just for the sake of the tutorial, but this is not really performant. And we can copy this line of code and we can go to our spawn barrels. And instead of using the game data, we want to use 
the get int from our transport value. We can get rid of this value here and now we can have a look if this is working correctly. Again, go to our data source and let's type the value 12. And now we can switch the scene and we see 12 barrels. Cool. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below or comment what you want to learn next on this channel. Also, please hit the like button if you learned something and then we see you in the next video. Bye.